Welcome dear students, this is Mrs. Clara from Mount St. Joseph High Secondary School, your Max teacher. So we are happy to inform you that very cheerfully we welcome our 10th and 12th standard students in our school and we are waiting for you soon. Okay, so get ready physically and mentally to get prepared for this academic year. Okay students, let's continue with the class now. Okay, we are discussing the topic vector algebra. So already we had plenty of introductions and the uh, understanding of the concept what is meant by a vector. So once again just for recapitulation you know there are two quantities vector quantity as well as scalar quantity. So what is the difference between scalar and vector. Now listen very carefully I am standing here I am standing here and I want to move towards a building or a house. Okay, now if I am going to walk towards this house, if I am going to just calculate the distance between, distance between myself and the house, distance between myself and the house. If for example, if it is going to be 3 kilometers, if it is going to be 3 kilometers, okay, if I just uh, took only the distance between myself and the house means that is calculated as a scalar quantity that is uh, calculated as a scalar quantity. If I am going to mention very specifically the distance between myself and the house not only the distance but the direction but the direction what I am going to choose in order to move towards my house. If I am going to choose the direction like this. As I know there are so many directions I can go this way, I can go this way as I know. So if any direction is mentioned specifically, so along with the uh, distance as well as the direction those quantities are represented as what vector quantity. Is it clear? So vector is a quantity which has both magnitude as well as direction whereas in the scalar we have only magnitude. Is it clear students? Those, this is a very simple concept already we have learnt and we know how to represent the vectors also. So using the bars if I am going to write a vector along with the direction arrow symbol. Is it clear for you? Okay. So these are the very initial concepts or already we have discussed now. Now in this exercise 8.2 we are going to discuss the topic under the exercise 8.2. Now we are going to discuss what are the operations discussed in this vectors. Okay. So we are going to operate. We know the basic operations isn't it? Addition, subtraction, multiplication and it goes on. Okay. So now let's discuss the basic operations involved in this vectors. Now for example addition addition of two vectors addition of two vectors now we know that the vectors we have two dimensionals two dimensions what are two dimensions if i have only x axis and y axis they may be three dimensions too so what are they it is x y and z is that no already we have discussed in the previous class so if this is going to be the x axis and y axis the vectors are represented along with their components along with the components what are the components are i j k so if i am going to take it as x the component is i cap and j already you know these things in your physics class isn't it yes no and now this one the vectors are represented along with the components is it clear okay now coming to the addition coming to the addition of two vectors or three vectors for example if i am going to have a vector is equal to i vector plus 2j plus 3k vector and b vector is going to be 4i plus 5j plus 6k randomly you can choose it now i am going to add these two vectors i am going to add two vectors so if I am going to add these two vectors, I have to add only the same components together, only the same components together. So you, you should have only the i coefficients alone, okay. So if I have only plainly i, what is the meaning? There we have 1i. So 1 plus 4 is 5. So what will be the answer? It is 5i plus 2 plus 5 is what? 7j. 
again 3 plus 6 is what 9k is that no so when you are going to add two vectors or three vectors only the like components together has to be added is it clear for you in the same way for subtraction also for subtraction only the like components will be subtracted together is it clear for you okay now let's see how we are going to subtract the two vectors now i had four i vectors isn't it yes now i am going to subtract the two vectors isn't it now the basic operations are same there is no change at all so if it is going to be subtraction what happened what happens now the signs of the second term all will be minus okay since it is given to be in positive it has become what negative if there is negative sign it will become as positive it should be that should be very clear already these things you know isn't it okay so now i minus 4i will give you minus 3i the same way 2 minus 5j 2j minus 5j will give you minus 3j plus 3k minus 6k will be minus 3k as i know this is the value for what a vector minus b vector so in the same way when i am going to add two vectors or i am going to subtract two vectors i have to operate only on the same components not the different components is it clear for you okay now moving on to the third operation moving on to the third operation multiplication by scalar multiplication by what scalar so scalar here the scalar means it's a constant it's a constant now look into this mm, uh, if a vector is equal to 3i minus 5j plus 7k now uh, they are asking you to find the value of phi a vector phi a vector now look into this now this phi stands as a scalar it's a constant so what i am going to do i am going to multiply each and every term of a vector by phi irrespective of the components now i am not going to see the components here because this phi is a constant it doesn't have any i j or k is it clear okay so now each and every number where every component has to be multiplied by phi so now what is phi a vector 5 into 3i will become 15i vector minus 5 into 5 is minus 25j vector now 5 into 7 is 35k vector is it clear for you so this is one more important operation the multiplication by scalar is it clear students okay now one more operation is there that is equal equal is also one operation isn't it equal vectors so what does this equal vectors means if i am going to demand that a vector is equal to b vector if i am going to demand a vector is equal to b vector for example uh, look into this a vector value is 3i plus 4j minus 6k is equal to lambda i plus uh, alpha j minus 6k vector for example let us discuss is it clear now look into this 3i plus 4j minus 6k is equal to lambda i plus lambda j minus 6k if not if not let us it have it as minus beta k2 okay now listen very carefully if i demand that a vector is equal to b vector means then the same components coefficients are equal the only the same components so i have to compare uh, lhs i component coefficient is what 3 along with what rhs i component with lambda is it clear so what will be the answer now 3 is equal to lambda i am going to compare only the same components not the different components the same way 4 4 j is equal to alpha j so 4 is equal to what alpha is it clear for you in the same way minus 6 minus beta so minus 6 is equal to minus beta so minus and minus will become plus is it clear for you so this is one more operation important operation what is that equal 
operation is it clear students so based on this we are going to discuss the problems now okay so one more important and simple one more important and simple concept is direction direction cosines direction cosines and direction ratios direction ratios it's very very simple to discuss is it clear now listen in order to discuss about this direction cosines and direction ratios we have to go for resolution of a vector it is resolution resolution of a vector resolution of a vector what does this resolution of a vector means resolution resolution means splitting up the components splitting up the components so splitting up the vector according to the components is said to be the resolution of a vector already you may have the introduction of resolution of vectors if not no problem in our next class we can discuss with the powerpoint presentation uh, what is meant by the resolution of a vector okay now you just understand the resolution of a vector and it is represented as r and it is represented as r now r vector now r vector stands for what resolution of a vector now the value of this r vector is equal to si xi vector plus yj vector plus zk vector is it clear so i have split it up the component uh, vectors into i component j component and k component is it clear okay now coming to what is meant by the direction cosines direction cosines you know what is meant by cosines cosines stands for cos ratios isn't it cos alpha cos beta or cos gamma okay now look into this we have a three dimensional three dimension x axis x axis y axis and z axis now there is a point p there is a point p on this three dimensional space okay now i am going to consider the angle along with op towards x axis towards x axis as alpha again towards y axis as beta again towards the z axis by gamma is it clear now look into this these things you have already discussed in your physics class no problem we'll discuss here also now every time the angle makes with this point p along with the x axis is alpha beta and gamma so we can say that the cosine ratios we can demand the cosine in detail when we discuss about the resolution of a vector in detail we'll discuss this also how do we get is it clear no problem now you don't worry about this now you just learn the formula to find direction cosine and direction ratios alone okay so now cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma they are termed as what direction cosines they are termed as direction cosines now coming to the value of this what is the values of cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma yes x divided by r y divided by r and z divided by r are the values of cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma is it clear for you so now if your question is find the direction cosines of the given vectors abdin sona you are going to find the values of x divided by r comma y divided by r comma z divided by r is it clear okay now coming to r what is r what is r so r is nothing but r is equal to square root of square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared x squared plus y squared plus z squared if it is going to be a three dimension if it is going to be a two dimension only we are going to write it as r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared alone so according to the vectors given if it is going to be a two dimension vectors we are going to write it as x squared plus y squared if not x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root of okay so very very simple you are going to learn this formula for what direction cosine is it clear now look into this what is meant by direction ratios 
direction ratios direction ratios are nothing but we are going to just uh, mention the values as x comma y comma z along with the coordinate uh, brackets we are going to represent that is going to be what uh, the direction ratios is it clear for you students okay so very simple we are going to do the problems based on this very very simple if i do one problem the rest of the problems you are going to try this homework very simple shall we yes okay students let's discuss the first sum of exercise 8.2 okay now looking at the first sum verify direction cosines are not we have to verify whether the given uh, vectors are direction cosines are not now listen very carefully in order to check whether the given vectors are direction cosines are not that is one condition okay so now what are the what is the condition that means gel square plus m square plus n square should be equal to 1 which should be equal to 1 now what does this l m and n stands for so l stand l stands for the direction cosines of the x axis m stands for the direction cosine of the y axis and n stands for the direction cosine of the z axis is it clear so the value it is given second subdivision i am going to do the second subdivision the rest you are going to try it as your homework okay so first one 1 by root 2 comma 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2 now the first one stands for what the value of l which is the uh, direction cosine of the x axis the same way value of m is what 1 by 2 n value is what 1 by 2 okay so what i am going to do i am going to square it and then i am going to add it if the sum of all these things on the lhs is equal to 1 then i can demand the given direction cosine they are direction cosines if the answer is equal to 1 if not i can demand that the given vectors are not direction cosines is it clear students okay so now i'm going to check this to prove i'm going to prove this let's check verify let's see okay now l squared yes l squared plus m squared plus n squared is equal to 1 by root 2 the whole square plus 1 by 2 the whole square plus 1 by 2 the whole square is it clear okay so now 1 by root 2 the whole squared is what square root and square is getting cancelled so the answer is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 the whole squared is what 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 is that no okay now look into this 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by i am going to take what lcm so what 4 is the lcm so now look into this i have 2 so i have to multiply it by what 2 is that no so 2 plus 1 plus 1 so now what is the answer 2 plus 1 plus 1 it is what 4 so it is 4 divided by 4 which is equal to 1 so i have verified the result since l squared plus m squared plus n squared is equal to 1 i can demand therefore given vectors are what direction cosines they are direction cosines is it clear for you students so very simple logic l squared plus m squared plus n squared should be equal to 1 now we are going to check it for second subdivision and uh, sorry first subdivision and the third subdivision if the answer is going to be 1 then you can demand the given vectors are direction cosines if not they are not direction cosines now listen very carefully this is very simple since i have root 2 i have worked out this problem is it clear the, the rest of two sums we won't have any surge over there no uh, root uh, numbers will be there ordinary numbers but you should be very careful in calculating squaring and adding and when you take the lcm also now listen very carefully you will get a number constant number uh, yeah, for example if you get 24 by 25 24 by 25 so now what you are going to do you are going to roughly you are going to divide and see 24 divided by 25 on seeing itself on seeing itself i can come to a conclusion this is not equal to 1 this is not equal to 1 but you should be very careful when you divide is it clear okay so if, when you see it's not equal to 1 you can demand that the given vectors are not direction cosines is it clear students will you try the homework sums 
Yes, please. Okay. Shall we move on to the next sum now? Yes. Okay, students. Uh, let's continue with the second sum now. Look into the sum. Find direction cosines of. Find the direction cosines of. Now, the direction ratios are given. That is x, comma, y, comma, z values are given. Is it clear for you? So, look into this. 3, comma, minus 1, comma, 3. Very directly, they have given the direction ratios. Is it clear? Okay. Now, we are going to find the direction cosines. Do you remember? Direction ratios is nothing but just writing x, comma, y, comma, z alone. Okay. Now, what is meant by direction cosines? Direction cosines is x divided by r, comma, y divided by r, comma, z divided by r. Now, what is the value? How to find the value of r? r is square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Already I have told you in the introduction class. Is it clear? Okay. Now, look into this. Now, I am going to find the direction cosines of this given direction ratios. So, very simple. So, first I am going to find the value of what r. Yes or no? I am going to find the value of r. r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Yes or no? So, r is equal to square root of what is x value now given to be 3. So, 3 squared plus minus 1 the whole square plus 3 the whole square. Now find the value now. Square root of 3 squared is 9 plus minus 1 the whole square is what? 1 plus 3 squared is what? 9. Yes or no? Okay. Now look into this square root of now 9 plus 1 10 19. Square root of 19. This value is for R. Is that no? Just we have found the value of R alone. Now we are going to find the value of the direction cosines. Direction cosines. It is given by the formula x divided by r comma, y divided by r comma, z divided by r. Is that no? Okay. So now look into this x divided by r. 3 divided by r value is root 19. So the direction cosine is 3 divided by square root of 19 comma minus 1 divided by square root of 19 comma 3 divided by square root of 19. Is it clear students? So very very simple. So just we are going to find the value of r and then we are going to write if if only the points are given direction ratios are given this is the format. Is it clear? Now, if it is going to be in your third subdivision, 0, 0, maybe 1 or 2, if it is given like that, you just assume x value is what? 0, y value is what? 0, z value is 1. Whatever may be the value is given, you just assign according to the formula and write down the values of the direction cosines. Is it clear students? Okay. Shall we discuss the next sum? The third sum is also same as finding the direction cosine and the direction ratios. But it is given along with the components. Along with the components. The same procedure, only one twist is there. Shall we discuss the third problem now? Yes. Okay, students. Shall we discuss the third sum now? Yes. Now look into the same. Find the direction cosine and direction ratios of 3i vector minus 4j vector plus 8k vector. Now, look into this along with the ijk component is given. Okay. So, nothing to worry. Only one twist is there. So, first what I am going to do, we are going to segregate and take and write the direction ratios. Direction ratios. So, already I told you what is direction ratios? Just writing x, y, z. Okay. Now, listen. This is the general format of writing a vector. Isn't it? A constant along with the component. So, xi plus yj plus zk is a no. So, x will be uh, written along with i, y will be written along with j and z will be written along with k. Okay. So, now I am going to take and write x, come, x separately, y separately and z separately from here. Okay. So, now that is going to be a therefore direction, direction ratios are direction ratios are what are they now look into this 3 comma minus 4 comma 8 so now what are the direction ratios 3 comma minus 4 comma 8 now this 3 stands for l value m value and 
n value is it clear students okay now i am going to find the direction cosines now in order to find the direction cosines i need the value of what r so what is r x square plus y square plus z square is it not so now i know the value of x y and z so square root of 3 square plus minus 4 the whole square plus 8 the whole square is it not so r is equal to square root of what you will get 9 plus minus 4 the whole square is 16 plus 8 is a 64 is that no yes now we are going to calculate so now look into this now what will be the square root value square root of now look into this what will be the value of r now r is equal to square root of 9 plus 16 is what 25 plus 64 uh, sorry 64 it is 64 now what will be r r will be equal to 89 if it is going to be a perfect square you can take the square root if not what you can do you can just leave the square root as it is okay now r value is what square root of 89 now the r value is ready once the r value is ready we can go for direction cosine so what is direction cosines now direction cosines are x by r comma y by r comma and z divided by r now take and write what is x value now 3 so 3 divided by square root of 89 comma what is next minus minus 4 divided by square root of 89 comma what is z value 8 divided by square root of 89 is it clear students so we have found the values of the direction cosines as well as direction ratios so very very simple so you are going to do the rest of we have all together six subdivisions here i have done one sum you are going to do the rest of the five subdivision sums as homework is it clear students okay okay students let's discuss the fifth sum now so this is also very simple based on the same concept now look into this if 1 by 2 comma 1 by root 2 comma a are the direction cosine of some vector find a okay now look into this very important word they are the direction cosine of some vector they are direction cosine so already in the first sum we have discussed isn't it if it is going to be a direction cosine then it undergoes or the proof is given that is l squared plus m squared plus n squared value will be equal to what 1 did you remember in the first sum we have discussed so this is the condition in order to have the direction cosine so already the given uh, numbers 1 by 2 comma 1 by root 2 comma a that is the direction ratios form a direction cosine okay so with this concept we are going to find the unknown value what a shall we proceed now okay now look into this since uh, it is given since it is given what is given it is or they are they are what is that direction cosine they are direction cosines direction cosines we can say what the direction cosines so this implies l square plus m square plus n square is equal to what 1 now from the sum what is the l value l value is 1 by 2 comma m value is 1 by root 2 comma n value is a is it clear for you okay now we are going to find now we are going to substitute so l squared is what 1 by 2 the whole square plus 1 by root 2 the whole square plus a squared equal to what 1 okay now look into this 1 by 2 the whole square is what 1 by 4 plus 1 by root 2 the whole square is what 1 by 2 plus a squared equal to 1 now we are going to segregate this first let us add these two so the lcm will be what 4 1 plus 2 plus a squared equal to 1 is it clear so now 1 plus 3 uh, 2 is what 3 3 divided by 4 plus a squared is equal to 1 is that no now i need the value of what a squared so keeping a squared on the lhs 
I am going to take this 3 by 4 to that side plus 3 by 4 if it goes towards that side it will become minus 3 by 4. So, A squared equal to again take LCM now I have 4 isn't it. So, 4 is the LCM. So, if I take 4 minus 3. So, A squared is what 1 divided by 4. I do not need the value of A squared because in the question they are asking the value of what? A. So, in order to get the value of A, I am going to take the square root. So, if I am going to take square root or plus or minus square root of what? I, I will get what square root of 1 by 4. So, the answer for A will be equal to plus or minus 1 by 2. Is that not 1 by 2? If I take square root of 1, it is 1. If I take square root of 4, it is 2. So, since I am taking square root, both plus and minus are eligible values of what? A. Is it clear, students? So, with the same concept, direction cosine, if they have given, the given numbers are direction cosines, very strongly we can demand that L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1. Is it clear? So, in, in, in this video, we have learnt the introduction about the operations of vectors, how we are going to do the operations, addition, subtraction and scalar multiplication and also the equal vectors. And we have learnt the new concept direction cosine and the direction ratios. Is it clear? Okay. So, direction ratios are nothing but the numbers proportional to the direction cosines. So, we are going to just write the numbers alone with along with uh, the coordinates x comma y comma z that is said to be direction ratios. Direction cosines are nothing but x divided by r comma y divided by r comma z divided by r. Is it clear students? Okay. Let us discuss the rest of the sums in the next video. Thank you students.